House Elections Committee Chairman Representative David Lewis of Harnett County joins us. The ruling this time goes your way for voter ID in North Carolina. What does it mean? I'm very pleased that the federal judge was able to take a look at the common sense voter ID and other election forms reforms that we proposed and find that they did exactly what we said they would do, which is we wanted every person to be able to cast their vote and to fully participate in the election process. The judge looked at all the claims to the contrary, um, most especially the claim that said that uh, less people would vote and said, uh, numerically, you're wrong on that. And we're very pleased that the judge uh, found in our favor. How does North Carolina's voter identification law square with other states, which states, if there are laws similar to it? Oh, we are very much in line with most of the other states that require some kind of an ID to be shown. Um, our, in fact, our entire election process is very much mainstream uh, with what other states do. You know, we have 10 days of early voting. We have a lot of hours that people can uh, show up and vote, non-traditional voting time. Um, and, but I guess the real crux of this case came back down to the voter ID and, um, it's just a common sense measure. You can show your ID and cast your vote, and uh, the judge recognized that uh, that was not an uh, impairment or a tactic to prevent folks from voting. Do you understand the other side of this debate um, after what happened in the 50s, the 60s, as, as, as civil rights, uh, that movement moved through America and still moves? Do, do you understand why they, folks would be fearful of any changes to voter identification laws or the implementation of them just based on past U.S. history? Well, let me be clear. I am deeply sensitive and deeply appreciative to all of the civil rights pioneers who have withstood things, uh, barriers to their participation, and have overcome that. And we are better off as a society to benefit from their sacrifice. Um, this is not a civil rights issue um, to me at all. This is, again, a common sense issue where folks are truly able to produce a photo ID to attest that they are who they say they are, and then to exercise their right to vote. Um, I am, I have listened to those on the other side of the issue, and to be frank with you, I think it's simply just that. I think that they are going to be contrary and opposed to any and every policy change that we try to make as Republicans in the General Assembly, and um, this was the complaint du jour, and um, they have continued to maintain it but we have continued to maintain that we want everyone to vote and the election results seem to be bearing out that actually in higher, a higher percentage of people are, are now participating in the election. So it certainly doesn't seem like it's had the effect of um, reducing the number of folks that vote. If you voted in the primary, you showed your ID this cycle. Yes. Um, and if you voted, you showed your ID and they asked you where you lived and sometimes you had to repeat yourself. Did the process go as smoothly as you wanted by and large across the state or did local precinct workers, did they have some work to do to learn the system? I think by and large the process went very smoothly. I think it makes sense to people to be able to show their ID and to prove who they are and then to cast their vote. I think that enough time now has passed. We are going to visit with the State Board of Elections and do our role as the oversight committee and say, hey, did things go as we thought they did? But by all intents and purposes, more, more people participated and um, that seems to be a good thing. Is this debate settled in North Carolina right now? Do you want to hear any more debate on the topic or after the primary 2016, was the law proven to be effective? Well, I think, I think there's a two different questions. Um, I think the primary of 2016 and the election of 2014 prove that these voter integrity improvements uh, in no way prevent people from taking part in the chance to vote. But I'd be naive, as would anybody listen to this show, if I thought that those that can't win at the ballot box would not continue to sue on not just this, but nearly every other Republican initiative that we have. Uh, we spend an enormous amount of time in court. I'm, again, I'm heartened by this judge's ruling, 
But uh, I'd be foolish to think that uh, those that are opposed to the reforms that the Republicans are trying to bring about will not continue to sue and sue and sue until hopefully they can prevail in court or be told by the U.S. Supreme Court that it's finally over. Representative David Lewis, thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much.